So an inherited family. You're part of a long line of people that have been royal. Sometimes they're called the firm, aren't they? Right? They're all together. A traditional upbringing. You've been to the right schools. You've been accepted into universities, even when you're not very bright. Um, you've been part of the armed forces. You're involved in sports. You're involved in charities. A traditional upbringing. There's a loyalty and obedience to the Queen. You notice that uh, Prince Charles, the Duke of Edinburgh when he was alive, would all sing the national anthem to the Queen. They would nod in a way of bowing to her when they came into her presence. She is the monarch of the United Kingdom and therefore there is loyalty and obedience to her. There are royal duties and an image to uphold. Um, as Jessica said, you don't have much privacy. You're in the limelight. You're there for the people, but you're not supposed to be of the people. You're above the people. You're widely travelled. You can go anywhere. You've got lots of money. All right, nice cars, nice clothes. And you should have a servant attitude. You're there to serve the Queen and the country. As you serve other people, the strange thing is that you also have servants and a big house. And so those two things have to be kept together. A servant heart to serve the people, but also servants to serve you. Right? Hard. Privileged life. We've talked about lots of clothes, nice places to go, people to guard you 24-7, fancy cars, all those kind of things. Always in the public eye, rare, rarely allowed any privacy. And they're relatively rich. I think the Queen's a billionaire, isn't she? Personal money and money from the state. So that's us. Human beings, if we were part of the royal family, those things would become true for us. But the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2 verse 4 that we're part of God's royal family. Ah, that's a bit different. Part of God's royal family. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Chosen and adopted into the family of the sovereign God, the God we prayed to, the God of the universe, the God who is all-seeing, all-knowing and all-powerful. Not the Queen, who, wonderful as she is, is a human being, but Almighty God. We are chosen and adopted into the family of God. How do we do that? We get accepted into that through faith in Jesus, accepting Jesus as Lord and Saviour of our lives. Chosen and adopted. Sometimes when people are adopted into a family, they are reminded by the parents that they've been chosen. We've chosen for you to be part of our family. God chooses us to be part of his family. He adopts us into his family. And our loyalty and obedience not only might go to the Queen, but more than that, it goes to Jesus, God's cornerstone. It talked about the cornerstone. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who puts trust in him will never be put to shame. That was God speaking about Jesus, the cornerstone. The basis on which our life and our faith depends. The key part, the keystone. Now, I'm no builder. In fact, I'm useless at do it yourself. But I'm told that getting that first stone in the right place 
is absolutely key for what the rest of the building looks like. And when I was down in uh, Oundor at the church there, um, somebody knew that I was going to preach, I think, on this passage and said, would you like me to bring in a cornerstone? So I thought, yeah, great. And he came in with this cube, which was like this, which was so heavy. They are heavy enough. Was so heavy. And he said, that is what you call a cornerstone. You start your building around that and it will be firm and secure. Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith and our lives. And we are called living stones. A wonderful picture of us of all kinds of shapes, all kinds of backgrounds, skills, achievements, opportunities that we're given. We're living stones, part of Christ's church on earth. Nobody is without value. Nobody. Each one has a part to play. And sometimes we can put ourselves down and we say, well, what value am I? I don't see what I can offer. I'm not much use. You are a royal priest. You are part of a holy nation. You belong to God. That's his value that he gives to you. That song where he talked about royal robes I don't deserve. We don't deserve them, but God bestows them upon us. We're precious in his eyes. Therefore, we're people of great spiritual inheritance. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us at the point that we accept Christ as Lord and Saviour. And the Holy Spirit is there to empower us, to help us, to give us the strength to do the things God wants us to do day by day. The Holy Spirit guides us, points us in the right directions, nudges us. All right? The Holy Spirit is very good at nudging. All right? Sometimes uh, when Enid and I are thinking about a particular issue to do with the church or something, a name will drop into our mind. We think, where did that come from? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit nudging us, pointing us in a direction. Go and talk to that person. They might be able to help in that situation. God's word and his promises are for us personally. That's the inheritance we have. All that's contained in here is for us as believers, as living stones, as royal priests. That is our inheritance, not some great amount of money, not fame, not a fancy house, fancy cars. God's word, all the promises that God has for us are for us as individuals. No matter who we are, no matter what background we have, no matter whether we have a theology degree or we never got any exams, it doesn't matter. God loves us. He values us as living stones. All different, but being moulded together by God. And we looked at that picture of the, of the uh, dry stone wall and uh, it, it, it never fails to amaze me how those things stand for year after year after year. I think some of them are nearly 100 years old. Just standing there, built so well, skillfully put together upon a very strong, wide foundation. Rough, and uneven. One of these stones in particular, this one's quite smooth, that one's quite smooth. This one uh, certainly needs some edges knocked off of it, doesn't it? All right? And we're all aware that we're not perfect. We're being moulded together by God and he knocks the rough edges off of us. The failures we have, the weaknesses we have, God's able to take those away if we put ourselves into his hands and we learn from one another. We rub up against one another and we rub the edges off. Right? Hopefully in a good way, not rub one another up the wrong way. All different, all being moulded together by God. 
And being royal priests, we have direct access to God. You'll remember in the Bible, the priest, the, 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 the top priest would go, the high priest would go into the um, Holy of Holies once a year to offer sacrifice on behalf of the people. You went to the priest and asked him to pray for you. You went to the priest and asked him for forgiveness. We have access directly to God, directly into God's throne room. That's what the Bible says. Because of Jesus, we have direct access with him. Royal priests, no intermediary, no professional go-between, no priest, no vicar, no minister, no pastor. We can go directly into God's presence as part of God's royal family. And just as the royal family, the human royal family, are there to uh, impact the world powerfully, we are here to reflect God's love, grace and mercy in our world. We are called to be salt, we're called to be light by our words and by our actions. One of our um, congregation at uh, a mosque has just had a mastectomy. Uh, very sudden, uh, discovered and was in and had the mastectomy within about two weeks. And the impact that woman has had is amazing. She talks about peace. She talks about being in a boat on, on, on a lake with Jesus. Just the way she has expressed herself and the way she has lived herself through this terrible experience is a tremendous witness. Salt and light. We have to be ourselves. We have to share with people what Jesus means to us. Not just words, but in the way we live and in the way we act. And let's never forget that we are brought out of sin's darkness into God's light through the price being paid by the sacrifice of Jesus. It's a powerful hymn that we've just sung, The Price is Paid. But it explains exactly what Jesus did for each one of us. We're not part of the royal family just because we're nice people. We're not part of God's family by anything we can bring. We're part of God's family because we've accepted that Jesus died for our sins and we've asked for his forgiveness. It cost him. We have no comprehension of what it cost Jesus to die on a cross. None whatsoever. The worst death ever on an innocent man who willingly went to the cross for you and for me. We have been brought out of sin's darkness by the sacrifice of Jesus. And therefore we live in a privileged position, a privileged position which is bought by the blood of Jesus. You are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That's the blessing. And because of that, live such good lives among the pagans that although they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Royal priests, if you didn't know about that, then you know about it now. If you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Saviour, you are called a royal priest, part of God's royal family, royal robes, but with those blessings comes the responsibility of living out our lives as witnesses, as messengers, as adverts even for what Jesus can do in our lives. May we be encouraged as we go from this place this morning. 
And may we rejoice in what Christ has done for us. And may we this week live out for him, being salt and light to all that we meet. Amen.